or again like ambient where we're just kind of scrolling around or doing our stuff in the room around the crowd and all. Uh, so we, we get hired to do that a lot and then there's just, just the circus band itself. It's called the Wanderlust Circus Orchestra and we, we perform a lot just as a band too. Wow. And then sometimes bring out uh, you know, little short little circus numbers that incorporate into the music. Yeah, we um, we do a lot of different sorts of shows and do them all the time, and they, they go all the way from being these massive productions that go on for you know, several days that have to be in theaters and we need to rehearse and write a script and all that, uh, to be stuff that's really just, we show up and kind of surfs around for an hour and then you know, go back home. So. so you is there a show that people can see here in the near future? Well, yeah, we're doing, um, so another thing that we do sometimes is these crazy circus dance parties, and we're doing one of those at the end of this month called uh, Grand Bazaar. Grand Bazaar. Uh, yeah, which is kind of uh, it's a belly dance and contortion and aerial dance and all this stuff happening within the context of a big dance party of uh, people playing. It's a guy called Solo Vox, who's very talented and wonderful, kind of live, uh, live keyboard electronic music, dance music. Um, and then uh, a guy called DJ Lafreak plays really good, big, big kind of dance floor bangers. And in both cases, they're putting together special sets for the show that are supposed to be evocative of the Middle East and of the, of, you know, kind of an older, an old-fashioned cabaret Oriental style uh -huh. um, that uh, that personified by like Middle Egypt and. Uh, so when and where is that? Uh, that is at the Star Theater on the 30th of January. Okay. And then the band uh, is doing a, a showcase on February the 4th at Dante's, the one at the, a monthly that we do called the Wanderlust Social. Nice. That'll be good, that'll be real good. Uh, with guests, uh, our, the opener is the Smut City Jelly Roll Society, a really great vintage jazz band. Nice. And we've got uh, Nagasita, the belly dancers, performing there as well uh, with the band. So that'll all be great. And then, gosh, what else? Uh, uh, website? Website? Do, you so many little, do you have a website where people can find out about you? Yeah. Yes, it's www.wanderlustcircus.com. www.wanderlustcircus.com. There you go. That's correct. That's Wanderlust. It's not Wonderlust or Wanderlust. It's W A N D E R L U S T. We get a lot of confusion. Get it right. Um. So on the 23rd of January. Yes. We are having the very first fourth at Dinner Friday, which is a gallery for all of the artists that we've interviewed uh, before the first of the year. In February, on the 27th, we will have the second one, where we invite all of the artists that we uh, interviewed in January. And uh, like I said, it's uh, just a big gallery where Artists can socialize with, I mean, anybody that's, that comes. Yeah, we're we're inviting so many we've people. We've got a bunch of people yeah, that have already committed to the artists, you know, and, and we've been, we're going to do like a, a Goodwill donation raffle where artists can donate uh, small works that can be raffled off to different people if they want to give a small donation of five dollars or more. And it's just a way of people networking, you know. Give over our house to it. You're probably a pretty busy guy, but I was just trying to think. I think that I think that on January twenty second I'm playing Kermit the Frog. <laughs> you know, in a bucket show. Twenty seventh. Twenty seventh? Oh, I think I'm I'm free for that. Oh on February twenty seventh. February twenty seventh. Right. Yeah. It would be a Friday. Mm -hmm. It would be great to have you. Yeah. Absolutely. And any, any friends you want to you bring? Can bring? Yeah, any any of your friends that you want to invite, and uh, if you know anybody, any artists that are interested in being interviewed for the Art Life Video Blog that want to showcase their artwork online and uh, at our gallery, I'd love, love to have them. Really cool. Yeah, you know, write something about it. I'll I'll, I'll think about it. Yeah, I should mention that at the show though, right? It's like January 22nd. I'm very excited about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm playing Kermit the Frog, which is a huge. It, it, what, what show? It's, it's a Muppet show themed burlesque show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so, you know, they've got someone doing Miss Piggy and someone doing Gonzo. You know, we're, we're, we're doing like a big Muppet show. So, which is huge for me because uh, the Muppet show, as I said, was really was a huge inspiration for me as a kid. So, uh, yeah, getting, I've, I've been working on my Kermit the Frog mannerisms and all, learning all of his songs and stuff. And that's great. Really good. Yeah, that's really sing, cool. Uh, the one, what's the one? It ain't easy being green. And I am. And, uh, and, uh, the Rainbow uh, Connection. The Rainbow Connection. These are the two songs I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm going to do It's Not Easy Being Green and The Rainbow Connection, <laughs> uh, which will be great. I don't want to say too much. I don't want to spoil yeah, yeah, the surprises. No, but yeah, but it, it, it's got to be a heck of a show. Okay. Yeah, that's good. I, I, I don't have many chances these days to perform in shows that I'm not also the producer of. Yeah. But I, I like to do that. I like it. It's fun to just get loose and turn in a performance without having to be like running around worrying about all the logistics. And where is this show going to be? At the Star, the Star Theater. And uh, you said the 22nd, what time? I'm not sure. Okay. Maybe a five, eight, nine. Look it up. I don't know. Look it up on mine. <laughs> when you, just, a, just a, a final question here. Uh, you're a writer as well. You write everything that you were describing in the circuit. When you, when you, where do you draw your inspiration for your shows? Well, um, the, the format of the show, this whole kind of show within a show with the backstage stories that are developing, re really is a lot like the Muppet Show. Right. Or my, uh, oh, these kind of shows. I used to watch a television show when I was a little kid called Kids Incorporated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like that too, where it was like, there are these kids that do shows together, but it's always the story of how the, 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 the drama of the show itself. How right, they try to put the show together. Right. And it kind of blurs the backstage and onstage elements like that. Or yeah, or the, the film, the motion picture cabaret, or there's an old musical called Carnival that was like that. I think a lot of these things were big inspirations for me from when I was very young. And as far as the specific storylines of the show, uh, I try to draw them from like, almost every show is the story of how one of our performers joined the circus. Uh, because uh, the, the whole backstory of the circus is actually pretty long and developed. It has a lot to do with um, my character, William Batty, is immortal. He lives forever uh, as long as he always stays on the road and never stops uh, performing with the circus. So it's kind of a Faustian bargain that he struck hundreds of years ago. Everybody who travels with him is immortal as well. So the members of the circus are all from different time periods. It's funny because a lot of this stuff doesn't really get explained very thoroughly in the shows, but it's people who see a lot of our shows start to understand more and more of, of how it all fits the together. Performers all story. understand their roles very clearly. <laughs> Some more so than others. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, you know, I, I often wonder about that with all the shows I produce, if anybody really is following it or you know, it makes sense <laughs> to me. But I get feedback sometimes from audience members that, that seem to be following the idea. So anyway, that's, so each each show is generally the, a, 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 a fantasized story of how a particular performer joined the circus. And so, you know, there's one about how, uh, like this, this most recent one, um, told the story of how Jenna, who's a singing acrobat in our show, how she joined the circus, but it was, the story was that she was this hippie, like I said, that we brought through time, and, and showed up and ended up joining the acrobats and saving the day, falling in love with the evil developer and all that. <laughs> and so that was, was kind of her story. There's another show that's all about how uh, Russell Bruner, who's this wonderful acrobatic swing dancer, we made a whole show about how he joined the circus that was set in the 1920s and showed up as like this cool swing dancing cat at the circus one day and then he fell for one of our aerialists and she was like, oh, we can't be together because you know I'm not 200 years old and you just curse to travel the earth forever. And so he was like, no, I'll come with you and join the circus. And, you know, this, this whole stories like this are very simple kind of archetypal stories that are usually based around somebody showing up and joining us and becoming part of our of our family. Uh, my current events as well, like you know, this one that we just did that was about the Belfer trying to buy the, the theater. That's you know torn directly from today's headlines. It's yeah. Very much what's happening in Portland right now with such a wave of gentrification and so many old venues getting shut down and. Uh, converted into some kind of slick new attempt to sell the city as the next big place. And so I decided to make a show about that because uh, I just felt like it would um, both would shed some light on what I consider a pretty serious issue in yeah. global culture right now and that also it would speak to people and they would find it familiar and, and uh, amusing because it's the kind of stuff that they're already thinking about and talking yeah, about yeah. as well.
Very cool. Well, any final final words? You want to talk about that? Oh. Well, I've been noticing you've been drawing this little pen. The whole yeah, time. I I did this with uh, this is something that happened yesterday, and I've got this idea that I, as an artist, you know, I, I feel like I could do little artworks, put them in plastic baggies, and link them around. And it's just art. You know, and I just leave art wherever I go, you know what I mean? It's like this idea. And then I had this idea that while I was interviewing people, I could create just a little drawing as we were talking, you know. On the back of his, his business card. On the right? back of my business card. All right. That's his business card. And then it says, Hippie Lost in Time <laughs> on it. I drew the face and then... Yeah. So that's for you. Oh, but I gotta, I gotta sign sign it. It. Okay. So yeah, that'll be your uh, takeaway. Um, do with it if it's what you will. Yeah. So this has been the Art Life Video Blog Day 63. Uh, I'm Jacob Wolf. I'm Noah Mickens. And Christopher Hoisington. It's been a great interview. Thank you for tuning in. We love you.